a showdown in Arlington. TCU, Oklahoma, the Big 12 Championship. From Arlington, Texas, welcome to the 2017 Big 12 Championship on Fox, presented by AT&T. For the first time in seven years, there's a Big 12 title game, and this one pits the 11th rank Horn Frogs and the Sooners at number three, perhaps on the verge of the college football playoff. Welcome inside, Joe Davis with Brady Quinn. You know, the Horn Frogs started this season unranked. They were a bit of a surprise sitting in the 10-2 and two to get to this championship game. For Oklahoma, different coach, but same story. Lincoln Riley steps in, and behind the Heisman front runner at quarterback, they sit at 11-1. and one. He's been the best player this season in college football at the most important position. He leads the country in touchdown passes, completion percentage, and ratings. And what makes him so successful is his uncanny ability to buy time in the pocket while still keeping his eyes downfield to make the big play. Oklahoma leads the country in big plays this season. That's why their offense has been so dynamic, and that's why they're playing this matchup today. And look, Baker Mayfield is a very interesting cat. Look, he's an edgy player. He plays with a lot of attitude, but this team plays off of his attitude and his edginess. That's why they're playing in the Big Show Championship once again. When you think of the Horned Frogs, you think defense, right? No different with this edition. Gary Patterson has one of the nation's best once again. And it's a complicated defensive scheme. A mix of coverages, defensive fronts, and pressures. They lead the Big 12 in sacks this year. And really, with the exception of their game versus Oklahoma earlier this year, they've been the top defense in the conference. And when you look at some of the struggles that they've had in that game up in Norman, Oklahoma, it's been stopping the gap running schemes. TCU didn't do enough uh, putting guys on that side of the line of scrims to be able to fill some of the run gaps. And you can see it's a clear running game to the end zone. It started with the power run there, and they come back later on in the game with the counter schemes. And it's incredibly difficult to stop, but they've had enough time to kind of make these adjustments, and it's going to come down to whether or not TCU has made enough adjustments and if they can execute it in today's Big 12 championship game. Yeah, I'll have another opportunity here. Less than a month after they met in Norman, we've got the Horn Frogs and the Sooners, the national anthem from Arlington on the other side of this break. This feels like a serious playoff football game. Doesn't it? Right now. Anderson with throw. Touchdown, Sooners. Mayfield over the middle. Touchdown, Sooners. What a game for this kid. Smash, mouth, oh, you, football. 38-20 to 20 the final. Oklahoma improves to 9-1. And so for the second time in less than a month, it's Oklahoma and TCU. And on the field, it's Bruce Feldman. Joe, in the first meeting between these teams, there were a lot of extracurriculars, including in the pregame when Baker Megfield hit TCU safety Nico Small on the head with a pass. Small ended up missing the next two games with a concussion. And Gary Patterson told us, I'm not sure if it caused it. Then again, I'm not sure that it didn't cause it. Lincoln Riley also inflamed Patterson a little bit with his explanation of that Mayfield throw. and he knows I respect his team. Now over to the TCU Horn Frogs with Pedro's Papadakis. Bruce, we don't have any fireworks in the pregame so far today, but there were fireworks last week, and that why Nick, that's why Nick Orr, the safety, is not starting this game. Multiple punches thrown against Baylor. He is out for the first half. Starting in his place will be Markel Simmons. He started two games when Nico Small went out for the head injury that may or may not so far we'll see him on the field Joe all right boys we're ready to go TCU won the toss deferred to the second half so right away we get to see strength against strength with the Oklahoma offense and the TCU defense it's the Big 12 championship game for the first time in seven years TCU Oklahoma off we go 
Arcelia Sutton takes a knee, and the Sooners just start at the 25-yard line with Baker Mayfield, one of the all-time great college football players, leading the way. He's been absolutely phenomenal this season, and I think you kind of thought to yourself at the beginning of the year, how would he be able to reload after losing D.D. Westbrook, Joe Mixon, Samaj P. Ryan? No, it's just the same old Baker Mayfield. He's been phenomenal. It's one of the most accurate quarterbacks I've ever seen at any level. One of the nation's top offenses scoring 45 points per game, loaded at the skill spots, dominant up front, and the Heisman favorite at quarterback. The thing I'm most curious to see is what adjustments does TCU make after they got beat down by Oklahoma up in Norman just a month ago? Rodney Anderson has exploded over the second half of the season. No player in Power Five conferences has had more yards than Rodney Anderson over the last six games. And a guy who played in just two games over his first two years. On second down, Mayfield to throw for the first time. Let's it fly for Mark Andrews, and it's third down. With a defense from Traven Howard. Mayfield sailing his tight end third and seven. And what coverage by Traven Howard. He plays linebacker. How many linebackers can run down the middle of the field and essentially play the deep middle of the field like he did on that last play? And third down. This is the down. I'm curious to see how much pressure Gary Patterson will bring versus Baker Mayfield. He is the best quarterback in the country versus the Blitz. On third and seven, TCU doesn't show any pressure, and they bring only four. On the speed out, Michael Jones has it for an Oklahoma first down. Stop made by Ridwan Isahaku, and Oklahoma is able to convert on third and seven. What impresses me most about Baker Mayfield is, is he really has it all. You know, he can play from the pocket, he can throw accurate on the outside on time, or he can make the big play by scrambling around and buying time. Back-to-back -back first down runs. This one goes for three or four. Matt Boson making the tackle. Now, one of Rodney Anderson's biggest games during the second half of the season came against these Horned Frogs. Four first-half touchdowns and 290 total yards. He swings out of the backfield on second down. Mayfield scans the field and drills one for Andrews and a first down at midfield. Mark Andrews, the Mackey Award finalist. And just watch Mayfield's eyes. He's going to look to the left. He wanted CeeDee Lamb, didn't have him. Steps up, buys time, and finds his tight end over the middle. Look at his eyes. Off balance, still an accurate football. Allows Mark Andrews to get the first down. And his 52nd catch of the year to lead the Sooners. First down and 10 from the 50. Corner blitz coming from the far side. Mayfield rolls away from it. Heaving one deep towards the end zone and incomplete. He wanted Marquise Brown. Jeff Gladney was step for step with a speedster and it's second and 10. They tried to bring some pressure off the edge. You're going to see the corner blitz. It comes from the opposite side of the field. Baker Mayfield wisely knows he doesn't have it protected. He moves away from it and tries to give Brown a shot. In their last matchup, Gary Patterson felt like maybe Oklahoma stole one of their signals. They dialed up a quarterback blitz, and they actually ended up bluffing him with Rodney Anderson, and he was wide open for a huge game. They changed that signal yes, over the last few weeks. On second and ten, again just a four-man rush. So Mayfield with time. Underneath, he hits Jones for his second catch, and a nice tackle by Traven Howard. Gary Patterson pleased to have Howard back, one of two starters that has missed the last couple of games. Nico Small and Traven Howard. Howard was out with an ankle injury, and Gary Patterson says he's one of the best linebackers he's coached. Five players are on the first team all Big 12 for this TCU defense. It's a veteran group, very experienced. One of the best groups at getting pressure in the Big 12. They lead the Big 12 in sacks. Oklahoma converted a third and seven earlier on this drive. This is third and six. Frogs bringing pressure. Mayfield in trouble. Able to get rid of it, but a yard short. It'll be fourth and one as Andrews is stopped by Ridwan Isahaku. 
Talking to Gary Patterson for this matchup, he said, we watched a lot of what Texas did versus Oklahoma. They held them to under 30 points. No one's been able to do that against Oklahoma this season. And you can see they're already trying to dial up some of those pressures. Texas blitzed Oklahoma 40% of the time. As we look at the Sooners going for it on fourth down, this is no surprise. They're an aggressive offense. Fourth down two. play. Anderson's got a first down and then some inside the 30. A gain of 12 and Oklahoma's converted a fourth down. So this is called the freeze speed option. Watch as Baker Mayfield kind of makes it look like there's going to be some action. It freezes the end line defender and it allows Anderson to get to the edge of the defense and pick up the first down. You know, one of the things that I think is underappreciated about Lincoln Riley is his play calling. In game, he's one of the best in college football. Of course was the old coordinator his first two years at Oklahoma then took over for Bob Stoops as the head man prior to this season and since he took over Oklahoma number one in the country in just about every offensive category and the 10th play of the opening drive for the Sooners Mayfield looks short shot gets through his progression zips one behind Marquise Brown and it's second and ten Riley the youngest FBS coach in the country at 34 years old and the youngest coach to take a team to any conference championship game Yeah, and look he, he kind of fell into a good situation Obviously what Bob Stoops has built at Oklahoma has been tremendous, but that doesn't make it easy And there's a lot of pressure on you, you Gotta hold yourself up to that standard and Lincoln Riley has done that this year first time since 1998 somebody other than Bob Stoops roamed those Oklahoma sidelines and Lincoln Riley's done a great job following it out of the pistol on second down. Here's Brown. Gets a block. Marquise Brown shifts his way into open space and stumbles back. You know, he was close to the first down marker, but then went backwards, and it'll be third down in about three. That's the risk you take whenever you kind of see more green grass, or more field, and try to make a move by backtracking. But once again, timely play call. Oklahoma throws the screen against TCU trying to bring a field pressure. Again, very similar to what we saw Texas do versus Oklahoma earlier this year. Gary Patterson thought that TCU played on its heels in the first half in Norman and then shut Oklahoma out in the second half, bringing a lot of heat. A little bit more like that on this drive. Now so one-on-one -on -one coverage up top with his tight end. On third and three, they only rush four. So Mayfield has time. That one's knocked down by Ty Summers. The junior linebacker from San Antonio makes it another fourth down, and the field goal team comes out. We're going to see Mark Andrew. He's going to release upfield, and basically they end up almost working a little double coverage on him. See how Ty Summers, he knows he's trying to work to him. You see Mark L. Simmons as well. It's a tough window to try to throw in, and TCU doing what they do best, getting off the field on third down. Well, brings on Seibert, who will attempt it from 41 yards. The junior out of Belleville, Illinois, has nailed 12 in a row. And Oklahoma has points on its opening drive. Kenny Hill and the TCU offense to the field for the first time in this Big 12 championship game when you come back. The Big 12 Championship on Fox is presented by AT&T and is sponsored by Volkswagen. Why settle for an SUV when you can have an SUVW? Aerial coverage of today's game being brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. Back at AT&T Stadium, Oklahoma settles for a field goal on its opening drive and now the Horned Frogs get ready to touch it for the first time. With one of the best return men in the country and Cavante Turpin waiting back. Oklahoma has a weapon in cyber. One of the highest touchback percentages you'll find in college football. On display to limit Turpin here. And so here comes the TCU offense and Kenny Hill, the senior from South Lake Carroll right here in Texas. Yeah, and a dramatic improvement from last year to this year. And he really just has improved over the course of his career starting from Texas A&M. 
to now at TCU. I think the thing that you're seeing most is he battles back from adversity. It's been kind of a roller coaster year in regards to him having some great games and following it up with a an average game at best. But it's the times when he struggles in games, you see him still come back and respond later on. First time around against Oklahoma was below 50% through the air for 270 yards. But last week, one of his best games of the season versus Baylor, so hopefully he can carry that momentum into today. That was after he missed the Texas Tech game with an injury, threw for 325 and three touchdowns against the Bears. TCU starts its day with a Kyle Hicks run. Nowhere to go, and the ball comes out. Scooped up and taken into the end zone for a touchdown. Scoop and score, Caleb Kelly. Disastrous start, TCU. Let's take another look. This seemed pretty definitive that the ball was out before Hicks was down. You can see right there, Amani Bledsoe able to get that big paw in on the football. And there's Caleb Kelly take it to the house. And the key on that play, Caleb Kelly actually brought pressure off of the edge. So good hustle by him, continuing to run down the football. You know, this has been one of the strengths of this TCU offense, taking care of the ball. They turned it over just one time over the last four games. One of their two losses, turnovers were a huge issue. At Iowa State, they turned it over three times, but have been so good at taking care of it since then. Oklahoma races out of the gates with a little help from the defense. In the Big 12 championship, it's 10-0. Let's take a look at that last play. There's Caleb Kelly. He's the linebacker who blitzes off the edge and eventually as he follows the play, picks up the fumble. But notice something else. Kyle Hicks, the running back, he actually had the ball in his inside arm. See right there? That is a no-no. You always want to have the ball in your outside arm so you can use that inside arm as your stiff arm. No Darius Anderson again for TCU, who was lost in the Oklahoma game. Their top running back. And so it'll be Hicks and Alana Lua sharing the load today. Back-to-back -back touchbacks for Austin Cyber. TCU finds itself in a very similar spot to last week against Baylor. They were down 9-0 two minutes into that game, but by the end of the first quarter led for good. And hoping for a similar reversal of fortunes in this one. I mean, already in this game, though, with as good as Oklahoma is offensively, this is a really important drive for the Horn Frogs. It's huge as far as the sake of momentum. And look, see the running back coach talking about which arm you should have the football in. It's talking about ball security, three points of pressure. But this has actually been a, a good football team at the beginning of drives, whether it's the start of the game or after half. TCU typically has done a good job of getting points on the board. No surprise, Shea Olanalu is in a running back now. Kenny Hill on the wall, being chased from behind. Throws, almost intercepted. Steven Parker breaking in front of Jalen Rager and probably should have had it. And this is a ball you just cannot throw. As Kenny Hill rolls out to his right, you're going to see Rager kind of start to cut flat, but he's not open. And clearly, Stephen Parker started to undercut that. TCU's very fortunate this wasn't an interception. Leak and Riley's reaction on that Oklahoma sideline. And again, TCU has been so good at taking care of the ball lately. Almost two turnovers on two plays to start the game. Hill to throw again. He hits this one underneath Cavante Turpin, who can really fly. Spins for a first down to the 35. Turpin just one catch over the last two games, and it seems like we've gone through phases this year where that's been the case, whether he's been banged up or teams have taken him away. But it's an emphasis for the Horn Frogs to get the ball in his hands. When you talk to offensive coordinator Sonny Cumbie for TCU, he talks about no-brainers, meaning ways to get Cavante Turpin the football that there's not gonna there's not gonna be any way of getting in the way of that whether it's coverage matchup anything else that was essentially just a downfield screen to Turpin they'd like to get him go going early and often in this matchup on uh, first down from the 36 in the quick game here's John Diaz he breaks a tackle and crosses midfield yet another TCU receiver who's been quiet lately that they wanted to get engaged early in this game and I think when they've got him matched up one-on-one, -on -one, which he is right here on the outside, they'd like to try to utilize his size and his hands. 
the DR 6'1, 215 pounds. LSU transfer has a first down. And now Hill in trouble. Trying to get away from Okoronkwo and does to Olamalua. Body slammed down by Oklahoma's leading tackler, Emmanuel Beal. Got Okoronkwo coming off the edge. He's one of the best in the Big 12. And if you're Kenny Hill, you got to step up in the pocket before you get out to the outside. But Olana Lua for a running back, he's got some good hands. Yeah. He's big, too. 6'3", 235er down there before the game. You're right. Huge. You like to run some of the Wildcat with him. Oklahoma struggled against West Virginia last week in the Wildcat. He runs it for the first time and stopped by Amani Bledsoe. They thought that Shea Wall last week, running for a career-high 71 yards. Gary Patterson said it was the first time that he ran the way a big back should. Ran like a guy who's 235 pounds should. Kyle Hicks comes back in for third and seven. This has been the sweet spot for the TCU offense. Lead the Big 12 in third down convergence this season. And it's interesting, actually, as it gets deeper, third and eight plus, they get better. Kenny Hill, who has the highest completion percentage in the country on third down this year, marks out the signals. Hill throws incomplete. Rager stumbled coming out of his break with the coverage from Parnell Motley. Fourth down. You're going to see Jalen Rager at the top of your screen. He's going to run a little out route, but he just doesn't keep his footing. And look, they played a game here Thursday night. And they obviously have changed out the field since then. And we had spent some time down there on the field. I mean, there's some spots that maybe you think the footing wouldn't be as good as you would assume on a field turf field, an artificial surface like this. We felt it yesterday, so I put spikes in my dress shoes today, and it was a lot better. <laughs> and Nunez with a line drive punt. Normally one of the best in the country. That was not a very good one. So Oklahoma will have it inside the 20, already leading 10-0. The Heisman frontrunner, Baker. Let's take a look at the Road to the Rings presented by Cade Jewelers. Oklahoma, you figure, is in with a win, sitting at number three. And then the discussion becomes if Ohio State's able to beat Wisconsin tonight on Fox. Who's in, Alabama, Ohio State? Yeah, I think they'd have to beat them handily, too. Really try to impress the college football playoff committee, although that Alabama resume doesn't look quite as good. They need some help from Fresno State. Mind you, to stay within the top 25. Oklahoma settled for a field goal on a 12 play drive to start. Rodney Anderson with a short first down gain here. What a story this guy is, huh? I mean, injuries his first two seasons. It's almost all to 2015 with a leg injury on his first carry. Broke a bone in his neck last year during fall camp. And really wasn't even part of the offense until halfway through the year, but has exploded over the last month and a half. He's got it again on second down, and he's greeted rudely by Ben Banagu. The Big 12's defensive newcomer of the year drops him for a loss of four. This is the difference between the last time they played Oklahoma. Watch how aggressive Banagu is in attacking the mesh point of the quarterback and the running back. He forces their hand. That was something where when we talked about in the open, a lot of the gap running schemes Oklahoma likes to run, they weren't as aggressive as far as attacking Baker Mayfield and the running back at the mesh point. Number two run defense in the country, Brady, but they gave up 200 to Oklahoma the first time around. Third down and 12. Mayfield quickly outside. They'll need open field tackling. They don't get it. Marquise Brown, first down across the 45. A gain of 31 for the first-year Juco transfer who's really come on. Well, you can see the miscommunication. You see Nico Small. You see Ridwan Isahaku. Both of them were signaling they needed an additional defender. They were a player short, but Oklahoma took advantage of it. And, boy, how good has Brown been? As his confidence has grown this season, he's evolved from not just kind of a special teams guy with some speed, but a legitimate deep threat. North Oklahoma replaced D.D. Westbrook. Had to replace more than 70% of last year's total yards when he combined Westbrook and P. Ryan and Mixon. They've been able to do it. Play clock winding down. Mayfield gets it off, feeding it to Anderson. On the Anderson with a first down gain of six. This 
is when we're talking about this TCU defense. It's been every other game this season besides Oklahoma. I mean, look at the amount of rush yards they were giving up. A lot of that happened in the first half. Just uncharacteristic of a defense that's really been so good all year long. Now, a number of differences in that game. Matt Boson was out early. He got ejected in that matchup. He's been a huge factor for this TCU defensive front. They feel quickly gets rid of it to Andrews with a block from Lamb. Tries to turn the corner, finishes forward close to a first down. They spot him just short, third and one. Typically, you don't see Mark Andrews being the recipient of those bubble screens. Usually when he's out there in space, he's there to help lead block for C.D. Lamb or Hollywood Brown. Pretty nice target to have on a quick little bubble, though, huh? 6'5", 254. He's hard to miss. I don't know how much more yards he's going to be able to get after the catch. Close your eyes, throw it left. He's probably going to get it. Third and one. They bring Jackson Ewells and Dimitri Flowers into the game. It's Mayfield to sneak it for an Oklahoma first down and more. Mayfield to the 38. This Oklahoma offensive line is massive, and they're one of the best in the country. Got an Outland finalist in Orlando Brown, their left tackle. He's a bona fide first-round pick coming up, probably next year's draft. He's got some eligibility left, but we'll see. He has to make that decision. All five of those guys starting time prior to this season. Experience, size, one of the best in the country, that unit. On first and ten, Mayfield to throw. All day to scan the field. Now the pocket collapses, so he slides up and goes to the sideline for Flowers. First down to the 21. To the first team all Big 12 fullback. I call Dimitri Flowers a Swiss Army life because he can do so many different things, although he's much bigger than that. Watch the concentration. This guy can run the football effectively. He can release downfield. He's great in pass protection and run blocking. And he's incredible, and he helps this Oklahoma offense be versatile as far as the different things they can do with the different personnel groups. Trey Sermon comes in a running back for the first time, joining Anderson. Now first down from the 21. Mayfield over the middle. That's caught by Sermon. A first down inside the 10. Something Oklahoma was able to do with success the first time around earlier this season. With that personnel grouping, two running backs, a tight end, two wide receivers, typically Oklahoma likes to run the football, so kind of a tendency breaker against this TCU defense utilizing the play action pass off of it. Once they get in the red zone, this is where typically Mark Andrews kind of is that target because of his size and his catch radius. Lined up to the slot on the left. Uh, first and goal for the Sooners. Keep it on the ground. Sermon bounces off initial contact and gets swallowed up. Stop to the five by Boson and Summers. This red zone defense for TCU as far as percentage of the time they give up touchdowns once the opponent moves inside the 10. One of the best in the country. And only Wisconsin better in that regard. Well, typically, they're one of the better tackling teams, but again, going back to the last matchup, that's where you saw Rodney Anderson have so much production. He would get into the secondary, and there'd be a number of missed tackles. Mayfield sets. In zone, Andrews. Touchdown, Oklahoma. And they've exploded out of the gates on the Horn Frogs again. Well, how often do you see this? Baker Mayfield under center. Doesn't happen very often. He's going to fake, fake, drop back. And you're just going to see a little short post route by Mark Andrews to the back of the end zone. Everyone's eyes are caught up with the jet sweep fake, the run fake. And there's Mark Andrews just finding that soft spot back and behind the TCU secondary. Started the game with a 12-play drive that finished in a field goal. Here they go, 81 yards and 10 plays. And finish it with a touchdown. The key play on the drive, Marquise Brown going 31 yards on third and long. It's finished off with Andrews, and it's all Sooners in the Big 12 championship.
The Big 12 Championship on Fox, presented by AT&T, is sponsored by Courtyard, official hotel of the NFL, and by Kate Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Oklahoma in the end zone for the first time. Mark Andrews from the five as Baker Mayfield completes all five of his throws on that drive. And in a big third down conversion to keep it rolling. Andrews has six receptions in the red zone this season. Five for touchdowns. He's had a ridiculous touchdown ratio in his career. Like anytime he touches it, finding the end zone. Still no chance for Cavante Turpin to bring it back. Let's go in the huddle. Brought to you by SoFi, a modern finance company with Petros. Guys, Gary Anderson, very, very upset. Gary Patterson, excuse me, very, very upset with his team when the defensive backfield was coming off the field after the touchdown. He got into him about a miscommunication, and when he got the whole defense together on the sideline, he started yelling about playing with more speed, playing with more confidence. It's okay to make mistakes, but he thinks his team is being hesitant right now. I think the back-breaking play on that drive was the conversion with the quick screen. And clearly there was a miscommunication in the secondary. They're a short of defender. That kind of broke the back of the TCU defense. They couldn't ever get back on track. Horn Frogs had a chance at a three and out had they come up with an open field tackle on Brown, but couldn't. John Diaz for the second time has it on the out pattern and keeps the legs turning for a first down. And this is going to be the challenge for Kenny Hill from here on out. He's going to have to take those easy completions to the outside. Oklahoma likes to play off coverage with their cornerbacks. They don't challenge the opponent's wide receivers that often. So he's going to have to make that long throw on a consistent basis on first down if they want to try to move the sticks. they will start at four of six. Shovel pass coming to Kyle Hicks. Who's pulled down by Kenneth Mann. Hicks first touch since he fumbled it on the first play of the game and it was scooped and returned for a touchdown. It's one of those curve balls TCU's offense likes to throw in throughout the course of the game. It was unbalanced. You didn't see an eligible wide receiver on that left side of the field. A little shovel pass just something that TCU does trying to give the defense a lot to think about whether it's personnel formations what type of play calls this time they put Hill under center on second and five from the 41 They'll throw it for Turpin too high tried to set up Turpin in space third and five for the Horn Frogs playing in Cowboys Stadium the bright lights Big 12 championship game you better believe Kenny Hill's adrenaline's rushing right now a lot of pressure on him. He knows he's got to help get his team back into this game. All the time high throws are some of those early jitters in games for quarterbacks. The best third down passer in the country. He's in a four man rush. He's got time. He rolls to his right. He needs the 47. He's got it into Oklahoma territory. Tiptoeing the sideline inside the 45. A run of 18 yards for the senior Kenny Hill and he's gonna have to do this throughout the course of the game because there's gonna be times when no one's open downfield Oklahoma drops back seven into coverage and he's gonna have to take off and find ways of making plays with his feet here's Turpin out of the backfield this time and he gets a short gain Will Johnson able to fight off of the block second and nine that's what you want to see if your defensive coordinator Mike Stoops out of Will Johnson kept his leverage meaning he didn't let Turpin really get past him to the outside fought through a block to make the play Stoops calls him the smartest player on this defense so good at recognizing splits and all the little things to help give their secondary an advantage Diaz, third reception. It's a block from Jarrison Stewart. Runs through the arm tackle of Trey Norwood. And has a TCU first down and a gain of 15. John Diaz is a load. I know he's listed as 6'1", 215, but he looks bigger than that down yeah. there in the field. And once he gets going, he's tough to bring down. He'll retreat it off play action. Running out of time and going down. It's Amani Bledsoe who forced the fumble on the first play from scrimmage. Coming up with a sack. Second down. 
One of the things Oklahoma does extremely well when rushing the quarterback is they get those high edge pressures. See Caleb Kelly right there? They force them to scramble up into the pocket, and that's where defensive tackles like Amani Bledsoe and some of the others up front can be able to get some of those sacks for them, not necessarily with their push initially, but because of the edge rushers. In the return of the Big 12 championship game, Oklahoma with the best first quarter in the game's history. 17 points more than anybody in the first quarter ever. Second quarter on the other side. Start of the second quarter, all Oklahoma through 15 minutes, a 17-0 lead. And Oklahoma fans know all too well. They've blown a few leads this year. Three times they've blown two score leads. Now they've won two of those. And they lost that Iowa State game after a big lead. Here's a trick play to open the second quarter. The former high school quarterback, Desmond White, couldn't find anybody open. Able to get back close to the line of scrimmage where D.J. Ward brings him down, and it's third and long. One of the most dynamic players ever at DeSoto High School and in Texas. One of the reasons why they like to try to design plays, whether it's trick plays, gadgets, things of that nature, to get guys like Desmond White or Devontae Turpin the football in space. They really trust them in their decision making, but also their explosiveness. Oklahoma brings pressure out of the secondary. Hill throwing for Rager. In the end zone, touchdown! The Horned Frogs needed it. And the true freshman, Jalen Rager, supplied it. Just what the doctor called for for TCU. 29-yard touchdown to Jalen Rager. Team leading seventh of the season for the Cole Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year. And it is Cole Bunce to handle the kicking duties today. Apparently Jonathan Song is okay physically at this point, but they're going to ride Bunce, who's been pretty good the last couple of games. Oklahoma Gamble. And TCU was able to respond. You see Kenny Hill, he sees the pressure. He signals out to Rager to run a fade route to the end zone. That's the Horn Frogs with six. Now, for whatever reason, Gary Patterson's teams really all season have gotten off to slow starts. They've gotten better as the game has gone on. And Coach Patterson's thing is if we can get this thing into the second half close, you like your chances. They're one of the best in the country after the break. It's all about the adjustments. Gary Patterson and his defense do a good job kind of settling in, figuring out what offenses are attempting to do. Short kick here, Marcellius Sutton from the four. And Sutton won't even reach the 20. Fighting his way across the 15 to the 16-yard line, Sammy Douglas with the tackle. What a way to finish the day on Fox, the Big Ten Championship tonight. Eighth-ranked Ohio State, fourth-ranked Wisconsin. It's fifth trip to the championship game in seven seasons, although one of those, that 59 nothing whooping they took a few years back that uh, essentially kept TCU out of the playoff. They might need a win like that in order to be able to get into the playoffs. And it's going to be something like that. that they're really going to have to try to impress this committee and demonstrate that they should be one of the top four teams to play for the national championship. Playing that game in Indianapolis, I always think it's cool when you get to play in a professional stadium as a, uh -huh. as a college player, but you know, neither of the players on, on these two teams, but in particular more for TCU, are that unfamiliar with the confines here at AT&T Stadium. Played in high school, some have played other games at the beginning of seasons, but they're familiar with this environment. Uh -huh. Both teams walked through yesterday, they really just walked around the stadium. Yeah, a little more familiarity. His drive begins with a Baker Mayfield pass play. Steps up and takes off into open space. Baker Mayfield across midfield. Showing off speed over the 30. A 
56-yard run. It's hard enough to try to stop Rodney Anderson, and then all of a sudden you try to stop this pass attack. There's just not enough guys around the line of scrimmage to account for Baker Mayfield. And look at the speed, if not for the angle of the TCU secondary. I think Mayfield's taking that one to the house. Once again, Baker, he's got something to oven. He's got something cooking. Nice. You always have one or two you spend all week thinking of, and then they're always really great. Brady. I'm all out. That's Good all job. I got. That's all I got for today. <laughs> First down from the 30. Oklahoma trying to answer right back. Here comes Rodney Anderson. He's close to another first down, and we go down to Bruce. Guys, Baker Mayfield spent most of that TCU drive stalking the Sooner sidelines. Kept on telling his teammates, let's go, let's go. We're keeping this up all day. We are doing this all day. Make sure we keep the tempo going. We are running through them all day. Fifth year senior from Lake Travis, Texas. Unquestioned leader of that offense. You talked about it off of the top. Rub some people the wrong way, but if you're wearing crimson, you love every bit of it. I think if you're a player on this team, you love it too, because you understand that he brings the fight to his opponent, not the other way around. You don't see that many times with an offensive player. Second down and short. Mayfield steps up, lost the ball, and thankfully for Oklahoma, Drew Samia was there to fall on it. They keep the drive alive. It's third down. And that was Ben Banaku. It's one of the things he excels at. He's got long arms. Very good at being able to get to the quarterback, but in that particular case, accurate, almost lethal. He can get a hand on the football. He is long, huh? And he's got a lot of speed, too. When you combine Banagoo with Boson, you see why TCU can get a lot of pressure just rushing forward. They don't bring a whole lot of blitz, even though they have early on today. Oklahoma's had some key third down conversions already in this game. Third and six. That's Mark Andrews. Mayfield scans. Once Andrews in the end zone who can't hang on. Coverage from Nico Small, and it's fourth and six. Every time you get Mark Andrews in one on one coverage, you got to take a shot and give him an opportunity. Nico Small is a five foot ten safety. I mean, it's just tough to be able to try to find a way of getting a hand in it to disrupt anything. Every ball to Baker Mayfield throws seems to be catchable. There's not many times you watch on film throughout the course of the year where he throws a football that's just inaccurate. Starboard hit from 41 on their first drive. This is from 43. And it snaps a string of 12 makes in a row. So despite the long run from Baker Mayfield, TCU holds up. He gets the ball back to the offense in a two-score game. Second meeting in less than a month. Oklahoma and TCU. It was all Sooners in the first quarter. Horn Frogs trying to yank away some of the momentum here in the second. See nothing Oklahoma before Sonny Cumbie's Horn Frogs were able to convert. A third and long for a touchdown. And now they get it back in a 17-7 game. Kenny Hill swings it outside. Avante Turpin steps out of a tackle. And runs for a gain of five or six. And very clearly, they're finding any way they can to get the ball in the hands of this guy. You know, in the last matchup between these two teams, Cavante Turpin showed a little bit of frustration at times for not getting more touches. A pretty productive day, but... Clearly, you can see early on, they know he's their biggest playmaker, and he can change this game in a heartbeat. Gone to him four times already. He only had one catch over the last two games coming in. He's the motion man on second and four. Kyle Hicks explodes for a first down. Close to midfield for the senior who's trying to bounce back from that fumble on the first play. Here he goes for 17. Watch how long Kenny Hill holds this. I mean, it took a while for him to give that football to Kyle Hicks, and I think he forced Amani Bledsoe to commit to him, which then helped open up the hole for Hicks. And Hicks is a guy who, you know, last year he was honorable mention all conference, was the featured back, more than 1,000 yards. He's dealt with injuries this year, though. Dealing with some adversity today, trying to bounce back. Back to him to the short side of the field. And Kyle Hicks again accelerates forward. Running with purpose for close to a first down. 
Oh, Bull Caranco with a tackle. They spot him right at the marker. Watch again this play. It's the football, stretches it, and then he sees the cutback lane. TCU runs a lot of different zone blocking schemes, meaning basically they start in one direction, and it's on the onus of the back to then see the cutback lane and find the hole. Kyle Hicks has tremendous vision. Right here in Arlington. Looking down less than a yard. And they'll throw it against the Blitz. Hicks is open out of the backfield for a TCU first down and a heavy dose of Kyle Hicks on this drive. When you get plus 50, you got second and short like that, typically you'd like to take a shot. TCU ran four verticals, but credit the Oklahoma secondary for their coverage. Then Hill finds the easy completion to Hicks for the first down. And it's an Oklahoma defense, Brady, that I think the best way to put it is this year they've been just good enough and an offense happy Big 12. Giving up a lot of yards, a lot of points, but heck, they're 11 and 1. Hill keeps it this time. Lost the football and then fortuitously finds it, finishing to the 31. It was Ogaranko who tripped him up. I was playing with fire here. We talked about how long he held the football the last time in Kyle Hicks' gut. And this time, you know, maybe he didn't have as sure of a hand on the football because the timing of that. You, you talked about this Oklahoma defense. I mean, one thing that they've suffered, though, is a number of injuries this season. Wow, that one was red, but Stephen Parker couldn't get his hand on it, so Desmond White gets a first down. Oklahoma had that thing ID'd from the start, and TCU dodges a bullet. The past two plays, watch this. He comes off the edge, nearly intercepts this, and if Parker did, that would have been a pick six, no doubt about it. Uh, leads to a first down for TCU. I think Hill saw that, put a little extra on it. <laughs> I'm sure he tried to adjust his arm at the last second if he could. Back to Hicks on a stretch play. Gets the corner. Kyle Hicks close to the 15. And there's some mixed emotions in the crowd. The Oklahoma fans won to hold. Meanwhile, the TCU fans are excited about, once again, a positive game. As you can see right there, it's number 81, Cole Hunt, working on Caleb Kelly. And you could maybe make a case there, but our rules expert, Mike Ferrer, saying, no, play on. Mike's with us in Arlington today. Hill pumps one way, looking in zone the other, and finding Cole Hunt, who's crunched with a first down to the 11. That is only the seventh catch of the season for the Rice transfer, but it picks up a TCU first down. Yeah, but that one had to have hurt. Watch this high-low as Hill works back to him, and oh. Not a bad blood between these two teams. Heard Bruce Feldman talk about it before the game. And then you play him again three weeks later. Midway through this second quarter, Horn Frogs on the move. Fake to Hicks, in zone shot. John Diaz adjusting, incomplete. I think he hauled it in, but perhaps was out of bounds when he caught it. And now the officials are coming together. One is already signaled incomplete. The question's going to be, did he gain possession or control the football and get it knee down? And that looks wow. like that may be a touchdown. Now, it's got to be definitive and indisputable. Mike Pereira, we mentioned you're sitting right by us here in the booth in Arlington. What do you think? Well, I think from what we see, it looks like a touchdown. He actually gets control with one arm as he's bringing it back in with the knee down. That is a ridiculous catch. And the body control and awareness to be able to get a body part in bounds before that left hand touches out of bounds. Review. I think the issue that you look at here is number one, he is going to the ground. So you have to focus on whether or not he maintains control of the ball. To me, he has it as he's going to the ground. And then the right hand is going to stay on the ball, even though you may get a touch of the ball on the ground. Watch for that control there. 
Ball hardly moves. I think you got to look at this and turn it into a touchdown. Wow. You agree with me here? Or? I'm with you. I'm right you there with, with you. I mean, I think there's enough there where it is indisputable. It looks like a touchdown. You know, I was going to be nitpicky a little bit about the, the play call in the sense of, you know, if, if they don't do the play action pass to begin that play, Hill gets the ball up sooner, and maybe they're not running out of space because he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. The play action fake wasn't going to play a factor as far as the coverage of that. But DRS being able to make a ridiculous play, none of that matters. The people here already know that this is probably going to be called a touchdown. They have a pretty good view with a video board here. <laughs> and Mike DeFee actually has a little bit different view than Big 12 officials normally have on replay reviews. The Big Ten is the only conference in the country that uses these monitors. They've actually loaned the Big 12 the monitors for today. And so DeFee is part of the replay process more than just being on the phone with a booth and I and I think that's great Joe because it gives him an opportunity to look at the play and confirm to what the officials said that they saw on the field as he sees it and then if he needs to make an explanation of why he overturns the call then he sees it as opposed to just hearing what the replay official had to say and let's give this crew some credit because they were by far and away the best in the Big 12 this year that's why they get to do this game after review the receiver got his hands under the football, maintained possession of the ball. It's a touchdown. Well, it took him a little while, but the Horn Frogs have arrived in Arlington, and we've got a game in the Big 12 Championship. Adds the extra point. What a catch from John Diaz. He had to have known it. He was just waiting for the inevitable. The call of a touchdown at a three-point game. Coming up on the State Farm halftime, can 14th-ranked UCF keep the unbeaten dream alive? Plus, Trolling Lane Kiffin and FAU gun for the Conference USA title. And we'll preview tonight's Big Ten Championship game here on Fox. Joe Brady, see you at the break. All right, Rob, looking forward to it. Kenny Hill, back-to-back -back drives with touchdown passes. Getting nice catches on both. Jalen Rager and then John Diars with one that you'll see replayed all over social media. Whole bunch with another short kick. Jeff Bedetz back on this one. Kentucky transfer, the speedster, takes it across the 30. There's a flag down. A couple of flags come flying in from around midfield. First flag of this game tonight, or a day where we thought things could be a little bit chippy. Mike DeFee and this crew doing a nice job of making sure nothing gets too crazy. Personal foul, face mask, kicking team number 35. 15 yards we added to the end of the run, first down. As Oklahoma will have the ball right around midfield to open this drive after this game break with Greg Wolf. Joe, thanks. Let's go to the American Athletic Conference Championship, number 14, Central Florida. The last unbeaten in the FBS getting tested. Riley Ferguson finds Anthony Miller. He goes 68 yards for the sport. Number 20, Memphis, on top, 31-24 to half. Winner likely earns a New Year's Six Bowl berth. Joe Brady, back to you. And what Sam, some may think is Scott Frost's last game as a head coach at UCF. Maybe he's going back home to Nebraska. From the 49-yard line, Baker Mayfield and the Sooners open this drive. The Rodney Anderson run, and Anderson looks plenty healthy there to the 41-yard line. Bruce Feldman letting us know that they've had to tape him up a little bit extra. The trainer's looking at him, but he's saying he's good to go back in despite dealing with the left ankle that's bothering him. Mayfield finds Andrews, who's chopped down by Nico Small. That's a first down inside the 30. Small will have to come out with his helmet coming off. I wouldn't be shocked if Oklahoma didn't try to attack number 16, Michael Downing, who came in to replace Nico Small for a snap. I remember, TCU's already a man short safety because of Nick Orr. 
Suspended for the first half for his role in the altercation against Baylor last week. High snap, pulled down with one hand. Anderson sneaks his way through a tiny seam for three. Guy who's been quiet so far today is wide receiver C.D. Lamb. Typically Lincoln Riley likes to get everyone some touches early in the game, get everyone going. Typically they like to utilize him when he's in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Been quiet so far today, not a catch yet. Anderson again. Third and short. Oklahoma looking for a third consecutive Big 12 title. And perhaps his second trip to the playoff in three years. And with this personnel grouping, I'd be surprised if they ran the football. Three flowers in there to lead block or help in pass protection. So it comes down to their matchups on the outside. On third and three, they run it with Mayfield behind the pulling Orlando Brown. And he stopped just short. Ty Summers and Ridwan Esahaku make it fourth and less than one. These are the gap schemes we've been talking about. You see the lead blocking for Mayfield. It was something that TCU struggled with last time they played Oklahoma. You see the adjustments, and no home offense is staying out there. They're going to go for this. Converted a fourth down and short earlier with a speed option play. They're going to a couple more big bodies here, huh? The last time they had a, a fourth and short like this, they're in the quarterback sneak for almost four yards. Timeout. First one of the half taken by either side. We'll take the timeout with them. And a fourth and one when we come back. Call. Uh, at that point, I think you still run the football. There's no, there's no reason to try to throw it here. You, you got a fourth down conversion earlier. You've got the size advantage up front. It's kind of curious that he didn't want to go for the field goal. Only because, you know, either way, Cybert's been great. They go with the same personnel they had before the timeout with the two fullbacks and Eagles and Flowers. On fourth down with a hard count, they get Chris Bradley to jump. Was there any movement from Oklahoma? Mike Defee and his his crew have done a tremendous job today of making sure they get everything right, but even the substitutions. There's been a lot of personnel changes, making sure they hold the ball, allow each team to have an opportunity to sub. Offside. Defense, number 56. Moved into neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Five-yard penalty, yardage results, and a first down. It's hard to hear, but this is just a savvy move by Baker Mayfield, who's obviously a really experienced quarterback. And when you're on a neutral site, you don't necessarily think about using the cadence as one of the things in your toolbox to try to get the defense offside. So big penalty on TCU makes it first down for Oklahoma at the 14. Mayfield pulls. Banigou can't get it. Mayfield crosses the 10, second and short. And I thought the right tackle, Bobby Evans, might have been a hold as Mayfield made his way around the edge. Had a hand on yeah. Banigou. Look at that. You can clearly see him tugging on his jersey, not letting him go. And that was out in the open. And allowed Mayfield to get seven, second and three. He pulls again. This time he won't get there. 
Markel Simmons is making a third consecutive start because Nick Orr is suspended for this first half. Brings him down and makes it third down. And watch this one. This is once again Mark Andrews. He's got his arm to the outside on Ty Summers. Hold on the back of him. I mean, that, that's two in a row. So third down and two. Mayfield to throw. In zone, Andrews again. Touchdown, Oklahoma. And it's all about the play action pass fake. Watch as he sneaks in behind the soft spot and watch these guys suck up on the run. And just an open window in the back. It's too easy, but. That's the advantage you have as an offense when you stay in third and two, third and three. You still have the threat of running the football, so it makes the play action pass that much more impactful. So the Sooners convert on third and short as Mayfield finds Andrews for the second time today. Nice response by Oklahoma after TCU climbed back to within three. coverage of today's game being brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right here in Arlington. Oklahoma with a 24-14 lead trying to punch its ticket to the college football playoff. TCU meanwhile one year after finishing six and seven in search of its first outright Big 12 crown. Turpin still no chance to get his hands on it on a return. We had a couple of plays in a row there, Brady, where you thought maybe holding. Mike Pereira, what did you see? Well, I, I think the first one clearly is here because you see the grab of the uniform, and it's the point of attack. So when you actually see the defender trying to reach out, that's one you ought to get. You got eight officials, so you got both edges covered. This one here, to me, you get a chip block, and then the guy begins to go down. It's a little more iffy than that, but clearly the first one, I think, was a hold. Well, and both, we know, would have potentially affected the outcome of that last drive. You always think point of attack. And if okay. it's at the point of attack, you should be tighter when you call those. Either way, that would have put them in maybe third and sure. longer, and then that doesn't give you the element of that play-action pass. Able yeah, to cap it off with a touchdown to Andrews, and the lead back to two scores. Kenny Hill, very efficient so far. Jalen Rager gets cut down by Parnell Motley. It's been a roller coaster season for the sophomore from D.C., but he's playing well lately. And playing extremely well, and he was out on an island, and they're trying to set up a screen, and this is a tough spot to be in as a cornerback because if you don't make this tackle, Rager's running upfield for a huge gain, and you don't know who's going to stop him. Motley won the job out of camp, started well, struggled midseason, and lost his job to a freshman. Moved back into the lineup with a great week of practice a few weeks ago and was really playing well. Kenny Hill has no chance. That play was blown up from the start. Caleb Kelly was there. Okoronkwo was as well, but Okoronkwo slow to get up. And that was a bad read by Kenny Hill. He's got to give away that football or find an option on the outside on one of their pass options in those RPOs. That's good to see Okoronkwo to his feet. Big 12 defensive player of the year. Eight sacks. He's got a lot of speed off the edge. Gets in the backfield creating chaos. He's saying I'm good to go. Get off the field. I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. The fifth year senior out of Houston, Texas. They're going to take him off and bring Mark Jackson on. He's saying this is a pass rush situation. You're going to make me come out. Third and eight. Hill extends the play. Kenny Hill needs the 35. Fights his way close to it and reaches for a first down. That last effort looks like it got Hill the first down. Talked about it in the first quarter. I mean, these are the plays that Kenny Hill's going to have to make. Now, 
I thought he had an open wide receiver down to, uh, downfield in Desmond White. He didn't feel like he could get it to him. Look at the toughness. Lowering the shoulder. Doing all he can to try to get enough to get that football over playing for the first down. Boy, third down has been huge on both sides in this first half. He plays in this game. This was doing a good job of letting both teams sub. When the offense, offense subs, the defense gets an opportunity. Hill goes underneath this time to Jerison Stewart. But a team high six catches last week against Baylor. He had one over his first 10 games. And that's kind of how the, the system works at TCU. I mean, it's kind of a, a wheel of each guy can end up being the hot hand. It just depends how the game plays out. Sometimes what the defense dictates. Two minutes left in this first half. TCU will have it to open the second half. Trying to get to within one score here. Hill with a great read this time. Saw Bledsoe take the running back. So he pulled it and got a first down to the 48. We talked about it before. A little bit iffy last time Bledsoe forced Hill to keep the football. This time a little bit more definitive. He's got his eyes on Bledsoe. Bledsoe commits, pulls the football, and then he makes Emmanuel Beal miss downfield for the additional yards. And in the half and counting, Horn Frogs all three timeouts. From the 48-yard line, against pressure, he boots out the back door, turns his shoulders, throws a strike, gets Desmond White. And it's a gain of nine and a half. TCU strategy right now is going to be to take their time. You talked about how many timeouts they have. They also get the ball coming out of half. So believe me, they do not want to give the ball back to Baker Mayfield with any time on the clock. Second and short. Well, the Rockwell comes back in the game. And Hill will throw. Zips one for Rager incomplete. Motley with the coverage, third and short, right at one minute. It's two minute drives. There's a lot of easy completions out there for you. The soft as Oklahoma secondary is playing. Only his second incompletion out of his last 15 throws. The Oklahoma offensive line gets a lot of credit. TCU should get some credit, too. These guys have only allowed 17 sacks all season. A good job of protecting Kenny Hill, but it's also been his mobility. And making plays with his feet. But a really good first half today. 16 of 20. He's also run for a couple of big plays. Third and short. Against a crowded box, they throw it, and Turpin gets a first down. That's what I was mentioning earlier on this drive. We saw Caleb Kelby come off the edge, and Kenny Hill ended up keeping the football. He should have thrown that little bubble pass like he just did. Back in 30 seconds. Only a few yards of play in that first quarter, but the offense has come alive for the Horn Frogs here in the second. And yeah, not that much different between total yards really for both teams. If not for the fumble that was returned for a touchdown, we'd have to need a tighter game. But at this point, the 27 seconds, you still got two timeouts, so you can really do whatever you'd like here. So if Oklahoma all of a sudden leaves you a box that gives you the numbers to run the football, you can still do that. The conversation is going to be if you do have to take a shot, Jalen Rager, number 18, and number nine, John Diaz. Those are the two bigger wide receivers. We've already seen them each cut, catch a touchdown pass today. That would be where I'd want to take a shot. Yeah, both proving it. Rager's to the right, Diaz to the left. An 11th play of the drive and started back at the 25 yard line. Hill with a deep drop. Down the seam. Rager can't hang on. With a coverage from Motley again. And that's a throw that has to be on time and out in front. He's going to run a post route once he gets inside. And you see Will Johnson looking the other way. There was a small window for it, but because the ball was thrown behind, Motley's able to make a play and disrupt the pass. Twenty-two seconds. Second and ten. 
Turpin comes into the backfield and swings out. Hill off his back foot towards the end zone. Desmond White is out there. No flags. Oh, there is a flag that came. There's no doubt about it. I was wondering that he tried to, to get back to the hip of Desmond White. What about that play design? Look at him. Eyes only. Defense number eight. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. That's just too much contact once he got to Desmond White, turning around, disrupting his chance to make a play on the football. What about the play design? They ran that little swing screen earlier to Turpin. This time, they run a little pump fake off of it, and they release Desmond White up the sideline. And of course, in college, the ball not spotted up against the goal line. Instead, right at the 10. 15 seconds, one timeout. And again, two timeouts at this point for TCU. Hill on a quarterback draw. Stopped by Will Johnson. They'll use a timeout with seven seconds. So now one timeout remaining. Coming up at the half, stay tuned for Rob Stone, Dave Wanstead, Matt Leiner, Robert Smith for the State Farm Halftime Show. UCF trying to stay undefeated. Lane Kiffin in the CUSA Championship with FAU and the Big Ten Championship tonight on Fox. Ohio State and Wisconsin. So seven seconds and one timeout remaining for TCU. And you basically have time for one play, at least to be safe, to assure yourself the chance for a field goal. Now on the on the jumbotron here, they're showing that TCU still has a timeout left. But we're showing that they don't have any left. Now, I thought that they had burned them all. And now they're showing on the jumbotron that they don't. We should have trusted our own stuff. True. No timeouts. Well, the that jumbotron is just so big. It's hard, right, it's hard to turn it down. So with seven seconds and no timeout, I mean, clearly you have to kick a field goal to assure yourself getting points. Cole Bunce comes on. Sophomore from San Jose who's taken over the job. The door is opened by an injury to Jonathan Song, and he's performed well. And so he's kept it, even with Song healthy. From 26, he makes it a one-score game. Good drive for the Horn Frogs. It started all the way back at the 25. 24-17, another 30-second break. Welcome back to Arlington in the 2017 Big 12 Championship on Fox, presented by AT&T. 24-17 after a half, and we welcome you back inside AT&T Stadium. Pretty much even over the course of those first 30 minutes. It looked like Oklahoma might run away with it. Leading 17-0 after a quarter, but TCU came charging back. And really, Brady, with the exception of the scoop and score on the first offensive play for TCU, this thing's been dead even. Yeah, the first matchup was a tale of two halves. This one so far has been a tale of two quarters. Oklahoma jumping out to that 17-0 lead. TCU then responding in the second quarter where they've scored all their points. Now they're going to have an opportunity getting the football out of half to tie it up. But really, it's been the quarterback play to me. Mm -hmm. Both quarterbacks known for two touchdowns and leading their team in rush. Pretty good play by both guys. And Baker Mayfield will have to wait a little bit before he gets his hands on it here in the second half. Kenny Hill will take it on the first drive. Devontae Turpin hasn't been able to bring one out. Austin Seibert, one of the best in the country, burying those through the back of the end zone, and he's done it each time so far today. TCU one year after finishing 6-7 in search of its first outright Big 12 title. Oklahoma trying to win a third consecutive Big 12 championship. It would likely lead to a second playoff trip in the last three years. Two 
bit of a good second half in store for you here on Fox. Day that begins with the Big 12 championship, wraps up with the Big 10 championship. again it's over Turpin's head let's go down to Bruce Feldman Joe Lincoln Riley's biggest frustration was tackling he goes they're getting too many yards after the tap after the catch he said we're not wrapping up he goes we got to play better on defense I like what we've done on offense we just got to keep going I told these guys it's going to be a 60 minute fight this is a championship game this is why you come to Oklahoma 24 17 after a 17 nothing for Lincoln Riley and the Sooners after the first quarter, looked like it might be another route, but it's tight as Kenny Hill and the Horn Frogs get ready to open the second half. Heavy pass in that first half, about two thirds pass for TCU. And they look to throw it to open the second half. Downfield shot, it's broken up by Parnell Motley as they went for Jalen Austin. Petros Papadakis, you talked to Gary Patterson. Yeah, Joe, Coach Patterson likes the way that his team bounced back, obviously, but they're having a lot of trouble covering the tight end, Andrews. He's concerned about that. Third down, he wants his team on the field on offense, off the field defensively, but he was very positive about the Frogs' performance. And look, that's just a tough matchup for any team. And I don't know that TCU has anyone in the back end to be able to cover Mark Andrews one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to have to devote two defenders to him. A fake to Hicks and a throw to Diaz, who can't bring it in. Trey Norwood jarred it out of there after it hit off Diaz's hands, third and ten. It was a high throw, but it had to be. Okoronkwo was in the way. It was right in between Diaz and where Kenny Hill was standing, so he had to put the ball up high. That was the only shot they had of completing that pass. Now in third and long, an area that, look, TCU has been better than anyone in the Big 12, but only converting about 30% on the year. Oklahoma's defense looking for a three and out to start the second half. But with a four-man rush, Hill heaving one downfield. Nobody out there, and it's fourth down. Again, they were looking for Jalen Austin. They went to him twice on this first drive. A three and out for the Horn Frogs. And these are some of the inconsistencies that you see with Kenny Hill, whether it's throughout the course of the game or the course of the season. You'll have times when he looks fantastic. You look at him in the first half, he was, what, 19 of 25, two touchdowns, no picks, and leading the team in rushing. And then we come out, and we've got three straight incompletions in the last one. Jalen Austin didn't even know the football's being thrown to him. They had two incompletions total in the second quarter, and then three. Three plays there. There's a flag down. Movement before the snap. Ball start. Offense, number 12. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And this has been typically a time when TCU has excelled offensively. They scored about 50% of their drives in the first possession out of half. Obviously not the start that Gary Patterson wanted, given the comeback they were able to have in the second quarter. Short punt, great field position for Oklahoma. C.D. Lamb makes the fair catch on a 36-yard punt. Our Ford unstoppable player, Baker Mayfield, 12 of 17 for 119 and two touchdowns. Well, this has been the key we talked about in the open. His ability to buy time while still keeping his eyes downfield. It makes it so tough to defend because even if you drop eight in the coverage, he's going to find a way of getting someone open. And he's accurate enough on the run, on the move, standing off balance to make those throws and once they get down in the red zone this is where they really pick you apart because of his ability to run their ability to run the football and then off of the run pass options that they have and saw the big run earlier in today's game I wouldn't be surprised if he's not going to remain an integral part of this offense running the football first drive of the second half of the Sooners Bobby Anderson motions out Mayfield looks the other way and a man comes open, it's Michael Jones on the first play of the second half. Jones goes 55 yards for an Oklahoma touchdown. Think about how much time Baker Mayfield had in the pocket. He was looking to the left, waiting for Michael Jones to get open. Slow off the football, but then he comes back inside. 
off the return route and just just a mismatch. Why Matt Boson is covering Michael Jones is a mystery to everyone. Yeah. And for Jones, his first touchdown of the season. Oklahoma's back in front by two scores. Their second play today of more than 50 yards. This one comes on their first play of the second half. Jones to the end zone. And the Sooners up by two scores. a touchdown in the second half and on the first play of the second half here in the Big 12 championship they give up their first touchdown since the first week of October and that can't be the coverage that Gary Patterson won on that side of the field Matt Boson is a defensive end covering a wide receiver out in space it's a disaster waiting to happen another touchback and the Horn Frogs will have it at the 25 so once again Kenny Hill finds himself having to dig TCU out of a hole. He was so efficient in that first half, but then 0 for 3 and a 3 and out to open the second. Yeah, and TCU's not going to win this game unless they all of a sudden start to become more balanced. They're not running the football that effective, at least not so far, even though we've only had one drive this half. But really in the game, Kenny Hill's been your leading rusher. There's been some design quarterback runs. They're going to have to keep doing that. But they have to continue to try to run the football versus this Oklahoma defense. You can't let Okoronkwo and the rest of the defensive front just tee off on that TCU offensive line. 27 of the 40 plays, Brady, have been runs. Here's Kyle Hicks on the ground. Getting a few. Kenneth Murray, true freshman linebacker with a stop. And I said 27 runs out of the 40. It's 27 passes out of the 40 for the Horned Frogs, which is bucking a trend from most of this season when it's been the most run-heavy offense under, under Sonny Cumbie. Well, this is a running formation. You can see the unbalanced set. All the eligible wide receivers with the exception of the running back to one side. Second and seven. They dump it off for Hicks. Needed one block. Instead makes the man miss himself. And Kyle Hicks runs down the sideline with a flag down. He stays on his feet and takes it inside the 20. But a flag back around the 40. 56 yards, but I would guess a big chunk of it is going to get wiped away. It will still be a first down. I think it's going to be on Cole Hunt. Schlopman and, and Hunt were down in that vicinity. Holding offense, number 81. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Let's go back and look at that formation. We talked about it's unbalanced. See how he's covered up? That typically, once he's in line, that means that someone can't go downfield once they release for the pass, or at least the ball can't be completed downfield. That's why it said it's a running formation. But a screen, that's okay. So they end up finding Kyle Hicks to the weak side, and you end up seeing on the right side of your screen the hold by Hunt. Mike Pereira says good call. Still is a first down, but instead of inside the 20, it's right at midfield. Hill goes through his progressions, waiting for somebody to come open. Nobody does, so he runs for three or four. Dylan Famatau with a stop, second down. A positive gain. I mean, that's the biggest thing. He's not forcing anything, nothing was there. Using his athletic ability to find space and get a positive gain, which has helped them on third down. TCU is four of six on the day. And it's in part because they've continually had positive gains on first and second down, put them in third management. Yeah, the three and out that they started the second half with began with two incompletions, and they were sitting third and long. Hill kept it, bounced off one man, stiff-armed another, and got close to the marker inside the 45. Talked in the first half about Kenny Hill and some of these zone reads. In this case, you can see Oka Ronquo clearly waiting for Shewo Alana Lua. But this Oklahoma defensive front is starting to sniff some of this out. 
Here's another third and manageable. A whistle right before that play clock ran out. And a timeout taken by Oklahoma. Looked like TCU perhaps had a numbers advantage Oklahoma. inside. Lincoln Texas Riley just timeout. barely beat the buzzer, calling a timeout. The Big 12 Championship on Fox is presented by AT&T. And aerial coverage of today's game being brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman, Petros Papadakis, and Mike Pereira is with us as well today. Live in Texas. Third down and three for the Horned Frogs. This is that same formation that I talked about before on the screen, the big play to Hicks. Interesting to see if they do something to the weak side, which they've done every time they've been in this formation today. That bit of the left in this case. And they do with Hicks straight ahead. And Kyle Hicks right at the marker. And it'll depend on the spot. How close was he? Let's take a look. Looks like his forward progress has stopped right there with Will Johnson. Oh, keeps driving. It's going to be close either way. TCU is going for it. Fourth down and inches for the Horn Frogs. They boot Kenny Hill. Okoronko is waiting for him. Here to depend on the spot. Parnell Motley and Obo Okoronko knock him out of bounds, and Oklahoma slams the door as TCU gets a little bit cute on fourth and inches. And this, to me, is something I hate. Look, you've got an open gap here, an open gap here. I know they're covered up, but you can find a way of getting yourself less than a yard. Why take the football back to then run a boot? You're not fooling anyone in that case. You're losing ground to try to gain ground. This Oklahoma defense has too much team speed, whether it's Okoronkwo or Motley. Needed a foot. Just don't like the play call. How about the game that Motley's had so far today? Yeah. Open field tackles. We see him recovering right then to stop the conversion. Oklahoma trying to make it hurt. How many times you see teams sudden change, take shots in the middle part of the field. See what Oklahoma goes with on first and 10 from the 40. Play conservatively. Anderson with a big hole off the right side for eight or nine. Look at the first half. Oklahoma was extremely balanced as far as their play calling. Running and passing the football. Those runs in the first half start to weigh on you in the second half. That big offensive line. On second and short, they'll throw it deep. Marquise Brown behind the defense for an Oklahoma touchdown. And just like that, the Sooners have broken it open. After the big first half that Mark Andrews had, watch the attention that he grabs in the TCU secondary. He basically ate up every defender in the middle of the field. Watch what happens. He's going to drop back. Everyone's going to drop back. It's going to be a little hesitation. And then beating Isahaku downfield. And the problem for Isahaku was, once he turned to look back after Brown got by him, you're never going to be able to catch up. you got to go find that wide receiver, get back to his hip, and then look to find the football. And he flashes that golden smile, the grill. The guy that Gus Johnson nicknamed Hollywood Brown. No chance for Isahaku to keep up with a guy with legendary speed, who's got a long touchdown. Baker Mayfield and the Sooners with a three-score lead. Well, 
Welcome back to the 2017 Big 12 Championship on Fox, presented by AT&T. Just like that, the Sooners have exploded to a 38-14-17 lead, and Baker Mayfield has matched the Big 12 Championship game record. Al Roberson against Oklahoma back in 2003 had four himself, and we still got a long way to go in this one. Now, something tells me he's not done yet. Yeah. Got a long day left in the kitchen for the Baker. You said you weren't going there again, but you did it. I didn't like this one as much. Touchback for Turpin. And where well, the momentum shifted incredibly in a three-play span. On fourth down and inches, Sonny Cumbie calls a boot. Kenny Hill gets popped out of bounds. Two plays later, Baker Mayfield with a 54-yard strike to Marquise Brown. Yeah, and I love the, the play calling too aggressive after you're able to get the fourth down stop. You can see Hollywood Brown. He said, that's a wrap running off the field they and that's the thing I think when, when you get a fourth down stop like that you got to take the opportunity to put your foot on the gas and not allow TCU to get a sense of we can still hang around in this game we've done it once opening the door for TCU to climb back in and a game that was 17 nothing after a quarter four frogs pulled it within 24 17 at the break off play action here's Turpin in the flat cut it back with a block Pile driven down by Stephen Parker after a nice first down game. For Kenny Hill and TCU, it's just continue to stay in that rhythm. You know, I don't put that last drive on him. I think he was put in a tough position with the play on fourth down. Sonny Cumbie, first year play caller. He was a co OC with Doug Meacham, who left for Kansas, but this is the first time where Cumbie is the undisputed play caller. You got to give Gary Patterson and both Bob Stoops credit for going to Riley and Cumbie and opening things up for both teams' offenses. Screen for Desmond White. Got five. You know, two old school, defensive minded head coaches decided a few years ago they knew how tough it was to try to face the air raid. And they wanted to try to bring on guys like Lincoln Riley, like Sonny Cumby, who had previously been in Texas Tech under Mike Leach, to open some things up and adapt with the times. That's why you've seen TCU and Oklahoma have so much success since they've made those changes. Yeah, both those coordinators are talking about those Texas Tech ties. In fact, Cumby was on the team while Riley was a student assistant for a couple of years under Leach. They lose the yard here with Alana Lua, and it's third down. Wes Overton there with Caleb Kelly. The biggest question is going to be who's going to step up for TCU. Someone's going to have to make a contested catch. Diaris has made his fair share of plays today. He's the guy I'd be looking to if I got him in one-on-one -on -one coverage. On third and six, they run it, and Hill is swallowed in the backfield by Kenneth Mann. That's twice now. I mean, a third down play call, I don't know how you think a zone read is going to get it for you. And there's Kenneth Mann, and you can see at the snap of the football, he doesn't commit so much to the running back or turn his hips. And I think that's what fooled Kenny Hill into thinking that he could try to get by him. And I, I honestly don't know, even if he got by man, if there was going to be any room for him. Yeah, the cardinal sin, right? The read man tackles you as a quarterback. It's the second time already in this half that they've had movement up front on a punt. But back to the play call, even if even if you're running the right. football and you're saying we're going to go for a short down. Kicking team number 35, five-yard penalty fourth down I mean you're averaging 3.6 yards per carry so far today I mean that was what third and seven mm -hmm. I mean that's not getting you there and, and I'm not sure why that you'd be so conservative at this point in the game you don't remind people Kenny Hill's 22 of 30 with a couple touchdown passes no picks could have had one in the very beginning of it but it was dropped either way he's played well enough where I think you can put more pressure on his shoulders Andrew David, Michigan transfer. Got a big lag. This is a good punt. C.D. Lamb, a fair catch. At his own 20. It's a 45-yarder in Oklahoma's offense, which has shown its quick strike ability in this second half so far. Back out there.
But well, we know about Wisconsin Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game in football tonight. The basketball squads face off here on Fox next to get us started with the Big Ten action on Fox today. If you're a Wisconsin or Ohio State fan, just turn on Fox and leave it on for the rest of the day. Love it. No need to change the channel. No need to move. The best kind of Saturdays. Nick Orr is back in the game here in the second half after he was suspended for the first half for his role in the altercation against Baylor last week. First down run for Rodney Anderson into the arms of Traven Howard. Uh, so far, it's not done much to help. First two drives, three plays, 114 yards, and two touchdowns for Oklahoma since the break. First down to the 40, beating Nick Orr. A gain of 17. There's a really good tight end that's here in Dallas. Jason Witten kind of reminds me more of, of Mark Andrews, or the other way around. Mark Andrews reminds me of Jason Witten. Look at the patience at his route. Sells it, sells it, and gets back outside on Nick Orr. I mean, this Oklahoma offense is so tough to stop because of their ability to run the football. It makes the RPOs, the play actions so impactful that it's just tough on a defense. I mean, you're, you're constantly in that predicament of stopping the run and trying to cover guys downfield. Her high seven catches for Andrews now. Ty Summers popping Rodney Anderson. The Oklahoma, when they got out to that big lead against TCU on November 11, got a little bit conservative with the play calling in the second half. That's part of the reason why TCU was able to shut him down. I've been too conservative so far in this second half. Two long touchdowns. No, and if you're TCU and, and Gary Patterson, you got to start putting some pressure on Oklahoma. They did at times in the first half. They're going to need to make something happen. Fake to Anderson. Andrews wide open underneath. Instead, Brown downfield trying it again. And a pass interference penalty. Glad they never turned around and then just ran him over. And this will move it into TCU territory. This ball almost hit the jumbotron. I mean, he <laughs> threw that with so much Pass trajectory. Defense, number 12. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Yeah, Mayfield's going there all the way. I mean, you saw Mark Andrews. You noted that he was open. And what about this? When Brown falls down, he almost has the opportunity to catch it. Yeah. On his back. That would have been ridiculous, but, but either way, you see the speed of Hollywood Brown. Saw earlier in the game. I mean, that's, again, it's so tough to defend this offense because they can hurt you in so many ways, and it forces your quarterbacks to play on islands. So they've got to win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. On the 42 with the first down is Anderson. There's a short game. Hollywood Brown has had that long touchdown early on in the second half. First year Juco transfer. He was 125 pounds as a high school senior and was a late qualifier academically, so he took a semester off of high school. Paid his way through a year at Juco ball by working at Six Flags as a ride operator. Had a huge year at College of the Canyons and then chose Oklahoma over West Virginia. Has really come on as this year has gone on. On second and seven, Mayfield looks to throw. In trouble, gets rid of it, incomplete. Wanted Brown, but behind him. Mayfield actually had Brown earlier in the route. Unfortunately, because he had to move in the pocket, then end up having to find a separate window, but you're going to see him work to the inside. You see right there, once he gets back past Ty Summers, but Mayfield had to pull it down, move in the pocket at that point in time. Made it much more difficult for him to get an accurate pass. TCU desperate to get off of the field here. Down three scores, running out of time. 5.35 left third quarter. And did out, bring Flowers into the game. TCU bringing pressure. Mayfield off his back foot. Wants C.D. Lamb, but it's over his head, and it's fourth down. Ty Summers, the man that applied the most pressure. TCU elected to 
force the issue, get the ball out of Mayfield's hands, watch the pressure off the edge. You're going to see Flowers right here. He's going to kind of bluff the edge and watch how he releases. And he would have been wide open. No one was responsible for him. Missed opportunity there for Oklahoma. And now the first punt for Oklahoma today. They didn't punt until late against West Virginia last week. Austin Seibert handle, handles all the kicking duties for the Sooners. This one, wow. Jordan Thomas, a much maligned season at corner, makes a fantastic special teams play to bat that thing back inside the goal line. The senior out of Klein, Texas. Watch this. The focus and concentration. It's one thing if you're down there as a punt return. It's hard enough to catch it. But as one of the gunners running down to try to down it, typically you don't see cornerbacks with those sorts of ball skills. No, yeah. And how about the punt by Seibert? And you mentioned it. You know, he was one of the best cornerbacks in the Big 12 last year. Came into this year, battled through a little bit of injuries. He hasn't played as well as he has in the past. Good to see the senior with a nice play here in the Big 12 championship game. So TCU starts from its own four. Play action. Nobody open at first. Now into double coverage and picked off by Will Johnson. Oklahoma takes it right back. Taking advantage of the special special teams. And these are just the back-breaking decisions that you cannot make. He's going to eye up the quarterback the entire time. And this play-action fake and the entire play just took so long to develop that it allowed Will Johnson to get his second interception of the season. With the awareness, too, to get his feet down, go up and get the additional yards, the fifth-year senior out of Baltimore, Maryland. So Mayfield and the offense threatening to turn this thing into a route now. John D.R. said no chance. But it's first down for Oklahoma at the TCU 17. We've seen Mark Andrews, the man who's been targeted so many times. And one of two things is going to happen. I think they want to, one, try to run the football. But I wouldn't be shocked either if Dimitri Flowers didn't get involved. He's been good so far today in some of their pass pros, some of the running. Really on the field is confirmed. Interception, first down. So after saying they were going to take a look, it's confirmed. Shane yes. Johnson got a foot down. Seemed pretty definitive. Yeah. It's good close. here. It's good here even on Sundays. Yeah, it is. <laughs> The 12 has been aggressive, stopping for the replays, wanting to make sure they get it right. First down and 10 from the 17-yard line. Anderson, leveled by Ty Summers. Second down coming up. But Ty Summers has just had a, a solid year for TCU, and he's he's so versatile. What about Mike Linebacker? He's played as an outside edge rusher at times this season. Due to some of their injuries. Junior out of San Antonio, Texas. The quarterback there in high school. A lot of quarterbacks on this TCU defense. Look at it, I think it helps them recognize different concepts, what an offense is trying to do, allows them to play faster. Mayfield steps up and eludes another man. There is a flag down as Mayfield goes down. Ross Blacklock eventually got it. And it looked like they were trying to set up like a downfield screen to Michael Jones. Holding offense number 58. It's a 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. It's on Eric Wren. It's their center, and as Mayfield moves, let's see right there. Although maybe you could have made a case, it might have been on Drew Samia as well. But there's the tug on Boson's jersey. 
kind of a sarcastic cheer from some of the TCU fans who thought that there should have been holding penalties on back to back plays in the first half. Who's CD Lamb going to show up to the party? Yeah. He's been working against Anthony Tejada. First team all Big 12. One of the better cornerbacks in this conference. Anderson blown up in the backfield by Matt Boson. First team all conference in his first year as a starter for the Horn Frogs. What a game last week for him, oh, huh? Man. Five and a half sacks versus Baylor. It's a half sack shy of the NCAA record. Well, they're going to need him here on third down. The Oklahoma coaching staff talked about him for the game stand. He's just relentless. The guy never gives up on plays. He's the type of guy you got to bring your lunch pail for, you know? He'll oh, be yeah. there all day. Third and 19. And they'll run up with Anderson. He'll settle for a field goal attempt. And that's a good stop by the TCU defense. Now, it came via a little bit of help getting a penalty, but to all of a sudden give the football to Oklahoma, this dynamic offense, basically in the red zone. You'll settle for a field goal. Seibert's made one and missed one today. Made from 41, missed from 43 to snap a string of 12 makes in a row. In fact, it was his first miss since the Iowa State loss in early October. This one from 40. We only get a few seconds to snap it. That is a delay. Unless Lincoln Riley got a timeout. I think he did. He is hot. Prior to the delay game, timeout, Oklahoma. Mild mannered guy from Neal Shoe, Texas. He can still light a fire when he needs to. <laughs> yeah, you wonder as he gets older, does he calm down a little bit more? Maybe that doesn't bother him quite as much. Being up 21 points, but I think this team is trying to prepare for bigger things after this game. Obviously, they don't want to make these sorts of mistakes. Eating up a timeout. So we'll take a look at Lincoln Riley's profile. Two years as the O coordinator was the Top coordinator in the country is the Broyles Award winner in his first year under Bob Stoops. And for the first time since 1998, somebody other than big game Bob roaming the sidelines. Tybert from 40. Right down the middle. So 41-17 lead for the Sooners, led by the Heisman favorite, Baker Mayfield. Hmm, I wonder who Brady's Heisman hopeful is. Third quarter, just like the first quarter. 17 for Oklahoma, nothing for TCU. Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman, Petros Papadakis, and Mike Pereira. Kenny Hill here. Kenny Hill's gonna get back on track. Three of eight for 51 yards and interception since the half. A touchback and Hill and the offense will start at the 25. We talked about it going to break. Heisman discussion. There isn't much of one at this point, is there? Yeah, you said hopeful. There's no hopeful about it. I mean, I, I think it's Baker Mayfield's at this point. Uh, there's no doubt the way he's played this season. I got Mayfield as number one. What Bryce Love has been able to battle through with an ankle injury for half the season and still putting up so much production for Stanford. He's number two and Saquon Barkley, um, you know, obviously limited the second half of the year, but I think this is going to look very similar to Bruce. Bruce? Actually, Brady is not. Um, yes, I agree. Baker's running away with the Heisman. <laughs> what? The one thing that's interesting for me is who's going to be third. I got Bryce Love second. As much as I love Saquon Barkley, and you know I do. He does. Uh, if Carryon Johnson has a big game today, or if Jonathan Taylor runs all over Ohio State, they could get in my in my third spot. Okay. Emmanuel Beal stopping Desmond White. Yeah, you see Bruce always hedging. Always right. hedging with his Heisman. Big fan of those big calves of Saquon Barkley's Bruce's. <laughs> that guy's got the Adonis effect, man. Uh -huh. Walks out in the field, 
don't know how high that booth was in East Lansing, but you could point out without a jersey, nothing. You could tell exactly who Saquon Barkley was. Let's take a look at Kenny Hill in the first half and second half. Look, this is kind of in the story of his career. Uh, there's times when he's unbelievable, and there's times when he's struggled. Desmond White dances to the outside. Gets around Trey Norwood and ushered out of bounds two yards short. Third down. Trey Norwood, the true freshman from Fort Smith, Arkansas. What a job he's done stepping in. Jordan Parker out. Jordan Thomas not having a great year. He's missing time with injury. He had to step up, and he has. You know, last time these teams played, Oklahoma started three true freshmen in the secondary. Trey Brown at the other corner. Robert Barnes at a safety. He's only got seven pass breakups, which that means he's getting tested, but he's answering the call. Option on third and short. Hill will cut it upfield for a first down. Oklahoma's pass defense much better the last couple weeks of Kansas and West Virginia, both to less than 140, but there have been some ugly games. And let's face it, it's rough trying to defend the pass in the Big 12. But they gave up 463 to Baylor, 368 in the loss against Iowa State, 448 in Bedlam. Today, 217 for Kenny Hill and the Horn Frogs. They're on sideline, John Diarch on the money for a first down. Well, again, I, I think I attribute their struggles at times or inconsistencies on defense for Oklahoma to some of the injuries. I mean, they've sustained injuries at every level. I mean, Matt Romar, he was a key piece up front. Jordan Parker at cornerback. They've had a bunch of players miss time. You know, when, when Chance Sylvie came in and, and versus Iowa State, I mean, he struggled. I mean, and, and that's going to be expected when you've got a young player who's only a sophomore, hasn't played a ton of football. Um, these, these offenses in the Big 12 put so much pressure on you defensively, not only just to get lined up, but a lot of times you plan on islands, plays are extended, they'll cover guys longer, it's just it's tough duty. And Mike Stoops is a popular guy for Oklahoma fans to point out when things go wrong for the defense, but... This guy's doing a heck of a job when you consider the things that he's gone through with the injuries they've had and what you're facing week in and week out. You look at their conference rankings and defensive stats. They're in the top half in just about everything. Kyle Hicks brought down by Emmanuel Beal. Emmanuel Beal was there, but Parnell Motley came flying up at the cornerback position to set the edge and basically turn back Hicks to Beal. Can't say enough about this young man, the way he's played so far today. Brings his third quarter to a close. Oklahoma with a repeat of the first quarter. Taking control of this Big 12 championship game and sending us to the fourth. Back of the 2017 Big 12 championship on Fox presented by AT&T. Back and forth, this game is gone, but two of the three quarters dominated by Oklahoma. 17-0 in the first and in the third. And they've got a solid grip on this one as we start the fourth. Joe Davis and Brady Quinn. Third down and long for Kenny Hill in this offense. Hill flushed out of the pocket. Can't find anybody open. And so gets it across midfield, but that's all. Do you consider going for it on fourth down at this point? I mean, you'd like to if you want to stay competitive, although the field position and how this Oklahoma offense has played this year, you're going to see TCU come out and punt. But in my opinion, there's just there's not enough time left. you got to value every possession. I kind of wish we would at least see them try to go for it. You know, a, a play that will be talked about a lot in the coming days was a fourth down play early on in the third quarter. Uh, fourth down and inches, Sonny Cumbie called a boot instead of a quarterback sneak. It was shut down. And two plays later, Baker Mayfield threw one of his four touchdown passes. Uh, he's been incredible. I mean, absolutely as efficient as we've seen all year long. I mean, even though they lost to Iowa State, he played well in that game. And it, it's just everything working for them right now. He's got his big tight end, Mark Andrews. But then it's buying time, being able to find Michael Jones. He's brown. Doesn't matter who you want to mention. I mean, CeeDee Lamb's the only one who's been quiet, but they've had everything working for them so far today. 
It's been a little bit of the opposite of what we saw in the first matchup where Rodney Anderson kind of took over early with the rushing attack. Today it's been more of the passing attack. Now Baker Mayfield now tied second all time with Dan LaFever of Central Michigan, 150 touchdowns. Case Keenum comfortably in control of that record. One of the great careers in college football history. Anderson trying to get outside. ECU rallies and shuts him down. Sammy Douglas there for the tackle along with Corey Bethley. This TCU defense is it's a more complicated than you see in college football. A lot of different moving parts and communication going on. The front. Front four, front five, they have one call. The back end has another call, and then they divide the field by field and boundary for their call. Anderson, good vision, and he's got a first down. This is the dominance of this Oklahoma offensive line. It's just a simple zone scheme, inside zone, meaning they're working on their double teams up to the second level, trying to get some movement, and allowing Rodney Anderson the freedom to be able to find the hole but dramatically different from what we saw them do versus TCU in their first matchup, where it was more gap schemes. And a gap scheme is essentially just attacking a, a particular gap. And a lot of the offensive linemen play side, block backside, and the backside offensive linemen pull to the play side to help attack that gap and create a hole. 77 yards for Anderson today. First down from the 21. Mayfield gives it to him again. And he gets five, stopped by Ty Summers. We're talking about Mayfield really statistically one of the great careers in college football history a right. guy who started at Lake Travis High School outside Austin had just one FBS offer it was to Washington State so he decided to walk on at Texas Tech won the Big 12 freshman of the year but decided to transfer didn't see eye to eye with Cliff Kingsbury on a few things sat out for a season and ran the scout team just tore them off you know, won the job over Trevor Knight in 2015. He's now minutes away from his third Big 12 title in as many seasons as the starter. Anderson again, first down. Just think about his career as an Oklahoma quarterback. I mean, he's kind of attached or aligned with Lincoln Riley in his career since he got here to Oklahoma. It's been a system that has really played to the strengths of Baker May Mayfield's skill set. Those two have really fed off of one another. Mayfield, a guy who has always played with that chip on his shoulder that the country's got to see this season, for better or for worse. Anderson on first down, stopped by Ty Summers. Check in with Bruce. Guys, there's a bunch of NFL scouts here, and Baker Mayfield's going to be pretty polarizing, I think, because obviously he doesn't have ideal size. Then again, he's as tall as Drew Brees and taller than Russell Wilson. And when everybody talks about whether it's going to be Josh Rosen coming out or Sam Darnold, when you watch this guy, he delivers every time. He's a great leader. He throws well on the run. He's got plenty of arm. And there's a lot of people I've talked to, including two here today, think if it's the right fit, he could be a first-round pick. for the second and seventh. Maybe dose of Anderson here, not much there. And following up on that conversation, Bruce said it. Look at situation, circumstance. I think it's got to be the right offensive you know, system and fit. Um, but you, you look at the qualities that he has. I mean, look, he's got a lot of a mo mobility. You've got to have that at the NFL level nowadays. He's incredibly accurate, not just from the pocket, but even on the run. Um, and that's not, that's not something that's easy to teach. I mean, if you don't have it by now, it's hard to develop that. And I think he makes everyone else around him better. I mean, you look at this group of wide receivers and pass catchers coming into this year, it's a dramatic difference from the production they had last year. Throws this one incomplete and they'll bring the punt team out with the pressure from LJ Collier. The polarizing part is going to be, you know, some of that edginess, some of the things that we've seen him do, whether it's outside of, you know, football or on the sidelines like we saw in, in Lawrence, Kansas. 
And, and to be quite honest, I hate, hate admitting this, but some people might not mind it as much as others. I mean, others might not want that as their franchise quarterback, and others might say, you know what, I, I don't mind it. This is a fiery guy. I know what I'm drafting. I know what I'm getting in Baker Mayfield, and I know what I'm signing up for. But if teams tell him he's too small, won't be the first time. I don't think I don't think that's going to be the case, though, uh, for the reasons Bruce kind of pointed out. But and so he, he sees well. He throws well over the middle. And that's usually the concern with a shorter quarterback. Here's Cavante Turpin. Look out. Cavante Turpin makes the kicker miss and runs it to the 35. That is a 54-yard return for Turpin, who finally got an opportunity in the return game. Seibert's limited him in kickoffs with a bunch of touchbacks. He averages 14 yards of punt return for the season. I think the thing that sticks out most is his ability to make people miss, and then it's the speed. I mean, defenders have an incredibly hard time of being able to take angles on him because of how good he is at getting to the edge and just exploding to the outside. Surprised Cybert even got a hand on him. Four return touchdowns in Turpin's career. This, by the way, is still a three-score game. 24, you need three touchdowns and three two-point conversions. It's on the mind of Kenny Hill and the Horn Frogs with 10-29 left. Knocked down. Hill catches it and gets the yard. Helped the old completion percentage. Yeah, that's one where you're really rather just bat it down. Is it worth just getting a yard? <laughs> Oh, man, it's fine. It's just your natural reaction. You can't help it. E.J. Ward does a good job getting his hands up. That's what your coach to do if it can't get there in time. But you can't help it. I mean, you'd rather someone not intercept it, but at that point, just hit it down on the ground. Your instincts ever take over and give yourself a reception like that? Oh, of course. Yeah. It's the worst. Because then your next reaction is, oh, crap, now i got to run the <laughs> right. Look where I am, right in the, right with the trees. Jalen Rager, there's a flag down. Desmond White's going to get called for a penalty. Mike DeFee as the crew sorts it out. This guy's got some guns. Sure does, man. It's like my partner. Not afraid of the weight room. Nope. You see him there today? Uh, no. No, I didn't. They stayed on our hotel. I don't know. I'm always just exposing the fact you didn't get in there today. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Mike did. He sorted out. Is there a better crew to have in case there was some bad blood, potential fighting? No, yeah. Mike right. DeFee, his crew. Start throwing bows. Look out. Personal foul. It'll go block below the waist. Offense, number 10. 15-yard penalty. Replay second down. Mike Pereira, what do you see on this one? That's a good call, Joe. What you have is you have a block back toward the ball below the waist before the ball gets clearly beyond the line of scrimmage. You'll see him turn back, block toward the inside. Ball still at the line of scrimmage. That what makes that makes that illegal. Had the ball been beyond the line, the block would have been fine. The best in the business. So glad Mike's here today. It's so cool, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Although we instantly become the second and third best dress in the booth. I typically try to wear vests. I, I couldn't wear one today. Oh gee. You chickened out on my feet. You chickened out on me. A man of high fashion like yourself, Mike, knows that a two vest booth is a faux pas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'm not competing with Mike P, all right? There's no chance. I'm losing that battle every time. I'm just glad I know what a faux pas is. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, quarter of the field. Try to get a little bit back. Kyle Hicks for five. And this is where, if you're TC, you've got to pick up the tempo. And you had mentioned that only down three scores now. It's three scores and three two-point conversions. But traditionally, they run a play about every 27 seconds. And that's actually towards the bottom of the Big 12. Who knows how fast these offenses typically operate. Third down, that's usually when things slow down, especially when you're in third and long like TC was here. But at some point, you got to go in that two minimum. You don't have much time left in this ballgame. Here's third and 19 with a lot of Lua motioning out. Turpin on the screen. Nowhere to go. Will Johnson drops him after a gain of three. And what a day Will Johnson's had. I mean, he's been all over the field, not only in the run game, but coming up to make stops on some of these screens in the pass game. 
eight tackles to go along with that interception. I said it earlier, smartest player in this secondary for Oklahoma. Helps get everyone lined up. Mike Stoops has so much confidence in him. Relying on him to make sure everyone's in the right place. It's ECU on fourth and 17. They're waving the proverbial white flag here. Sending it away with Nunez. TCU unable to do what Oklahoma did successfully earlier in this half. That's a touchback. Baker Mayfield and the Sooners. Minutes away from probably punching that ticket to the college football playoff. The Big 12 Championship on Fox, presented by AT&T, is sponsored by EA Sports FIFA 18, rated E and available now by Chevy. Chevy has earned JD Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs. And by Domino's. Order online and track your order. All day today, aerial coverage has been brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. Back of the Metroplex. Arlington, Texas. Boy, what a scene this is for the Big 12 championship game. I'm glad it's back. I, I know there's been some conversation that this had the potential to play out the Big 12 champion because they have to play the additional game, and it looks like Oklahoma would have been a shoe in if they didn't have to play. But Trey Sermon on first down. You know, there were there's years like in 2014, right? The, the first year we had the playoff where there was co-champions. And then they didn't have that playoff game to determine that. And, and maybe the college football playoff committee that year had a hard time determining between the two. So they didn't take either. Um, so when it, when it comes down to it, I think it's always better to have that 13th game. To be quite honest, I don't know how you couldn't say that the Big 12 has a more truer champion than any conference because they all play each other. And then the top two teams score off again in the Big 12 Championship. Tell me what other conference in the Power Five is doing. You're right, though. Kind of darned if you do, darned if you don't. Looks like it's going to work out just fine for the Sooners this year as Rodney Anderson's toppled in the backfield by Michael Epley. This would be an eighth Big 12 Conference Tournament or Conference Championship. It'd be an 11th overall title and that is far and away the most of anybody I've seen Nebraska on there breaking news started Scott Frost oh ah. how about that Bruce what do you know about coaching carousel you haven't followed that at all this week have you yeah it's been a busy week Joe uh, earlier in the day we had reported that Nebraska is telling some of the recruits they've already got Scott Frost is going to be coming 90 percent of his staff is in place. It's go time for the Huskers, and it's a really lucrative deal for Scott Frost, who is going to have some really good options if he decided not to come home to Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Trey Sermon again for six. What do you think? I love it. You know, I, look, he's one of those young, up and coming coaches that I think he brings the energy, he knows how to recruit. You know, he can implement an offensive style and system that will be conducive to Nebraska being competitive again. So, and look, I think it's big, too, when you bring in a guy who's a former player there. He understands what it means to the people locally, but obviously understands, too, what it means to the players who are coming there and, and how they can really develop as a young man as they continue their football career, whether it's in Nebraska or on to the NFL. Sermon, good patience, good strength. First down into TCU territory. 18 yards for the true freshman out of Georgia. And he is a load, six foot, 222 pounds. Let's see why early on this season they tried to get Trey Sermon a bunch of touches. In fact, they even let him throw the football at times. He's got a halfback pass in there. It's just a stacked group of talented, skilled players at Oklahoma. Can anybody slow these guys down? I don't think so. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't matter who, who goes in the playoffs. I, I know people think that this Oklahoma team and the Big 12, that they don't play defense. No, these offenses are that prolific. They're that difficult to stop when you look at all the different things that they put in front of you. And you combine that with Baker Mayfield and his high level of play as things get a little bit chippy. And credit to Mike Defee and this crew, though, that, as you see him laying the law down. Credit to him, though, right? I mean, for the way this crew has handled a game that had a chance to be chippy. 
him before the game in the locker room and he was intent on keeping control of this game. He knew what happened last time and they've done a terrific job and I'll tell you their entire crew has done a great job today. So was replay. We've only had one review on a really necessary one. So a really complimentary uh, uh, effort by the officials. Mike how do you get through security with those guns. I mean how do they let that happen. Here? Well you know he, he 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 works hard at it and you know <laughs> I, it's like I calculate. Um, but I think he takes so much pride in this that you know and it really shows in the leadership of his crew I have to tell you this is the first time in Big 12 championship history that they brought a whole crew that worked together all year and to me their performance today I think it showed in the past it used to be all stars all stars it was all stars versus a, uh, a crew that had worked 11 games together when you do that you know your strengths you know your weaknesses yeah. you cover for each other terrific job. A good run for Trey Sermon. Oklahoma with the first down of the 40 or the 35. Sermon again. Punishing run across the 30. Take a look at our expectation shattering drive of the game sponsored by Buick and really it's a three play stretch for this game turn. Yeah they have the fourth in inches and instead of just running a quarterback sneak they try a naked boot and Oklahoma the ensuing drive is able to capitalize the big touchdown pass the Hollywood Brown and I say turn but really that's when the thing was put on ice you know, Oklahoma had a two score lead at that point TCU had a chance to drive down and cut it to a touchdown and instead two plays later they trailed by three scores coming into this game Oklahoma had a hundred and four plays of 20 plus yard games and that, that's unheard of and this offense is almost an average like nine yards on for our gain first downs. I mean, it's ridiculous to think what they've been able to accomplish this year. And even when you take into account having to play TCU, the best defense in the Big 12 twice. Third down, three. Third down and short. Kind of drive here that old linemen love grinding that clock, keeping it on the ground. All eight plays have been runs. Sermon again with Traven Howard and what is going to be a losing effort has been spectacular 15 tackles for the TCU linebacker and the guy's just got so much heart I mean, he's, he's six foot one 213 pounds that, that's the size of most safeties he's played linebacker the entire year he's a tackling machine he's incredibly athletic a sideline to sideline guy chasing down the football I mean, you can't say enough about the season that he's had really what he's meant to this TCU defense since he got to Fort Worth. Four tackles and anybody other, anybody else under Gary Patterson. Fourth down and one. They keep the offense out there. And hand it to Sermon for a first down. Our AT&T play of the game goes all the way back to the first TCU play of the day. Oklahoma had a field goal on its first possession, but then on TCU's first play from scrimmage, Caleb Kelly scoop and score off a Kyle Hicks fumble. They brought a blitz off the edge, and Caleb Kelly wisely continued to follow the play, and he was rewarded. A big mistake by Kyle Hicks, putting that football on the inside arm, not on the outside arm, and allowed Bledsoe to be able to knock the football out. And then Kelly with a touchdown. And Lincoln Riley doused is the first coach, the youngest coach to take his team to a conference championship game. Only coach ever to do that in his first season. Offense. Five yard penalty, first down. And now he's going to win it. And think about Bob Stoops and his career at Oklahoma. Won a national championship in his second year. Could Lincoln Riley win it in his first year. You know, he'll be only the fifth coach in FBS history to get 12 wins in a debut season and a chance at two more in the playoff. Chris Peterson, Tom Herman, Larry Coker, Brett Bielema, the group that he joins as they start to run the clock out. Incredible to think what he's been able to accomplish and as well as Baker Mayfield over the course of his career at Oklahoma. 
He's going to go down as one of the more prolific passers in their school's history, but the way he performed. I mean, the young man just wins. Fueled by all the times he's been told he's too small, too slow, not this, not that. Goes all the way back to the days he used to lose the family games of horse out in the driveway to his brother and his mom and his dad, and then his days in junior high where he had to crow hop it just to get the ball downfield. Fueled by all those times. And here he is with a third Big 12 title. Now all that's left, the details. Oklahoma has the college football playoff in its sights. And for TCU, it may feel like a disappointing season, but coming from where they were just a year ago, a dramatic improvement. This is a team that's still got some youth. They're going to be a team to look out for in the future. But obviously, heartbreak and disappointment for a school that's just down the road. Bruce has a guy who had a career day, Mark Andrews. Mark, two touchdown passes today. For you, what was really clicking against this defense? Uh, really, it was just great play calls, um, getting put in the right situation, and, um, you know, we prepared all week for, for the moments like that, and, um, you, know, I, you know, I thank Coach Riley and my teammates to help me get those touchdowns, and um, it was really just preparation. Your quarterback, Baker Mayfield, is running away with the Heisman this year. What impresses you most about him? He's incredible. Uh, first of all, he's, a, he's the best leader I've ever seen. Um, he's electric. You know, I've never played with a guy like that, and he's really special, and it's an honor to be able to play with him. For you as the leader of this team, Lincoln Riley's first year, the transition from Bob Stoops to him seems like it's been pretty seamless. For you, what has stood out about this season as you go to the playoff? Just our team chemistry. You know, we've always stuck with it, um, especially, you know, after our first early loss. You know, this team came together and really, um, you, know, you know, fought back. And it's, it's awesome to see this team to be able to do that. And, um, you know, we're in a good place right now. All right, thanks, Mark. Hey, guys, back to you. All right, Bruce. Baker Mayfield in the return of the Big 12 championship game does what he's been doing his whole Oklahoma career. Four touchdowns through the air and a third consecutive Big 12 title. He'll present the hardware to the Sooners on the field here at AT&T Stadium in just a moment. Stick around. The Sooners are champions of the Big 12. And we've got more post-game coverage coming up. Bill Cross, winner of the Heartland Regional Emmy, only on Fox 25. The Big 12 Championship on Fox, presented by AT&T, is sponsored by State Farm, here to help life go right. Back here in Arlington, and a trophy that was made in Oklahoma, we'll head back to Oklahoma for the presentation, down to Petros. All right, it is time to hand out some hardware, ladies and gentlemen. you guys have put together An unbelievable team you know we have great coaches great players we've been through a lot a lot of ups and downs and we stuck together through it all that's what i say is most special about it now you've thrown for over 70 percent over 40 touchdowns have you done enough to win the heisman trophy i'm not worried about that i'm going for a national title ladies and gentlemen to present the big 12 championship trophy big 12 commissioner Congratulations, Lincoln. On behalf of all 10 members of our conference, you uh, put together a great, great football season. Good luck in the postseason.
That's what you do at Oklahoma. And this is a, a special moment, a special moment. All right, uh, so proud of these guys. We're going to enjoy this one here tonight, and then uh, we got bigger things to come. How do you start to prepare for the championship? When does that begin? After we celebrate this one. You enjoy it, Coach. Well, Congratulations. Then. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your 2017 Big 12 champions, the Oklahoma Sooners. Joe. All right, Petros. I'm just wondering when, when The Rock and Steve Austin are going to take the stage. <laughs> oh, just incredible. I, I can't even see him down there with all the confetti. So the Sooners... By blinking TCU in the first, blinking TCU in the third, and exploding in both those corners, quarters, control this one handily. They win the Big 12 championship. They're third in a row. It was fun having the Big 12 championship game back. 41-17, the final. We'll get you back to Rob Stone in Los Angeles for more post-game coverage right after these messages.